Hello, it's Martin here. Welcome back to Skeleton Gorge. I'm just having a look at the wheat farm. I have a plan to fix that little problem, which I am going to do in a minute. But before that, there's one other little problem that uh, you may have noticed in my last episode when I was making the little skeleton. Take a look at there. Uh-oh, left one block out, and we can't have imperfection. So very quickly, I'm going to uh, run up there and repair that problem, and then we're going to see if we can make the wheat farm work again. So up we go. And there we go. One more problem solved in Minecraft. Right then, so I'll head back down again and we'll take a look at this wheat farm. So, as we saw earlier, the problem is that these um, water blocks in the centre here are causing the water to not flow properly as it comes down. Basically, the way water mechanics in Minecraft work are such that as it gets to here, the water kind of likes to divert into this little hole rather than flowing smoothly down. I don't know all the details of it, but I have done a couple of quick experiments and it would appear that the solution to this particular problem is going to be to simply cover up that middle row because basically I have a nine block wide farm which is stupid because water only flows four blocks from a source block so there's no way I can hydrate nine blocks wide if I put water at the two edges because I'll basically get these first four blocks and then I'll get nothing hydrated there and then I'll get these four blocks so it makes more sense really having thought about a few options just to kind of abandon this whole middle row I'm losing less efficiency than I would if I narrowed the whole farm by one on the side uh, well it's, it's less effort anyway um, so I've got a whole load of stone brick blocks because I think they'll look alright and I'm basically going to leave the, the water in there and just cover up that whole row with stone all the way down so that the uh, farm is one block narrower. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, job done. And uh, oh, Enderman down there. Hang on a minute. Let's see if we can uh, let's see if we can get some Ender pearls. Always take these opportunities. Are you angry? Are you angry? Do you want to come and get me? I shall look away then. I don't know if he'll come in the daytime. Oh, he did. <coughs> It's the wrong sword. Get the looting sword. Oh, I don't have the looting sword. Never mind. He'll be back. He's just teleporting around. I'm getting distracted. That's what's happening here. Uh, right, I'll just quickly take out one of these pistons that we don't need anymore. So it would be that one there. We'll have that as well. Oh, that's made that piston open. Shouldn't be a problem, hopefully. I'll put a block underneath it. And then... Climb back up here, and yeah, creep round. I don't think that's a problem. I will take that piston there out, and just fill that in, like that. Should have got the piston back there. Where's it gone? Hmm, it's probably dropped down below. Never mind. Okay, so all should be well now. I will run down to the bottom and switch on the switch and hopefully we'll get all of this wheat. And yes, it's all running nice and smoothly this time. So that's great. The wheat farm problems are sorted out and uh, that should keep me fed for quite a few Minecraft days. I will speak to you in a few minutes. I've got some more tweaking to do over there at the end of tower. And then after that, uh, we're going out on some exploring. So I'll speak to you in a minute. OK, we're at the top of the Ender Tower now, and the sun is going down. But before I start looking at Enderman, I want to make um, possibly some improvements to the way this works. Uh, so uh, Brian had a video out the other day, and he was the person I originally got the idea for this uh, from. And he had basically, I think, put half slabs all over the top of here and then had put uh, more half slabs like this so that when you're standing and you take that out 
so that when you're standing here, you can look down, but you can't fall out. That's what I believe he did. And then obviously take the fences out. And it means you get a better view of the whole area around. Um, the Endermen can't knock you out. Because what I found, though, even though you can't jump over a fence, uh, if an Enderman comes up here and smacks you in the face, as they tend to do, or more likely hits you from behind, you do tend to kind of fly up over the edge almost and I did land on one occasion on top of the fence and also one time when I was building this I fell right down to the bottom there and went down to half a heart which is the closest I've ever come to dying in this world so I'm basically going to do what I think is what Brian did uh, if I've got enough of these half slabs I'm not sure I've got enough up here right now actually so it may be an incomplete job I might have to go downstairs and get more yeah definitely not going to have enough uh, I could make wooden half slabs. Seems a bit of a waste to go travelling. So, um, yeah, we'll craft some wooden half slabs and put them up here. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I've done half slabs all the way around here, half slabs on the floor, so it's physically impossible for me to fall out, but I can see pretty much everything down below, and I also can't get over the top. Uh, in addition to that, on Brian's video, he mentioned that everything underground in the area around where his tower is, is very much lit up. And that's also the case here. I've done quite a lot of lighting up in this area, so I do get a lot of mobs spawning around here. And being a desert, it's very easy to see them as well, which is nice. And I've got the brightness up quite high, so it almost doesn't feel like night time. Um, there was one Enderman around earlier on, but he has disappeared while I've been doing this and uh, didn't get a chance to look at him. So, I will hang around here and I'll bring you back in when we see an Enderman. Oh, there's one down there. Hello? He's angry. We'll see if we have any more luck with them actually getting up here, because the other big problem I was having in the last episode was they weren't actually making it up here. But he succeeded with no difficulty at all. Uh, so in the end I was having to go downstairs and kill them by the back door. Now the only thing about this new arrangement is I can't... Lost him again. I can't quite see the floor anymore round the back door quite as easily. I think I could see down a bit better before, but never mind. He's going to have to hurry because it's nearly daytime. Don't despawn. Oh. Let's get that one down there as well. Come on, up you come. And now daytime has arrived. I'm just going to run down and see if I can catch them out by the back door. Well, one end of pearl, not a great night, but... Could be worse. Oh, I didn't think I got that close to him. Okay, time to head home. Never mind, not a bad night of ender farming. I got one. One is better than none. Okay, it's time to move on to the next part of tonight's episode then, and I have a bit of a mission. The one thing missing from my farm at the moment is I don't have any... Uh, melons and basically down at the bottom here of this long staircase which I keep on showing you but I've never really shown you in full uh, I, I, did, I dug this all the way down to bedrock and close to the bottom was a nice big uh, to the mines abandoned mine shaft kind of area which I've pretty much cleared out now but um, I've explored almost all of it. I think I've pretty much explored all of it, to be honest. And I didn't find any melons down here. Now, there's not really much chance of finding melons anywhere else in the game because I think you only find melon seeds in chests in abandoned mine shafts. So, the plan is going to have to be to find another abandoned mine shaft. And that's going to mean a lot of exploring. 
Uh, so I'm going to get my exploring gear together, and then we're going to go out on an expedition. So I'll speak to you in a minute. Okay, it's morning, the sun is coming up, and uh, Skeleton there is looking quite happy, enjoying the sunshine in the desert. Uh, it's time to go adventuring. I'm looking at my inventory here. This is uh, my sort of exploring inventory. You see I have plenty of swords, plenty of picks, a couple of shovels. I've got the bow, lots of arrows. Uh, I've got a bed in case I want to reset the time at some point while I'm out and about. Um, I've got mushroom stew and lots of spare mushrooms and plenty of torches as well. So let's go out exploring. I'm going to hope to find an abandoned mine shaft. So I basically want to travel a fair distance because I know there's one here which is fully explored so I don't know how often they occur but uh, I think they're fairly infrequent so I want to go quite some distance I'm gonna head in an easterly direction towards the rising Sun and uh, we're gonna see if we can find a nice cave system some distance away and then go underground and see what we can find and I'm exploring new ground in this world to start with we seem to be in the mountains so uh, a little bit awkward. I'll bring you back in when we come across something interesting. Wow, okay. <laughs> I think this counts as something interesting. It's a dungeon on a mountainside. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like that before in Minecraft. Uh, what kind of dungeon is it going to be? Oh, hello, it's a zombie dungeon. Oh, very nice. Well, we might as well find a way in and see what we've won here. They're going to push me off this cliff, aren't they? Uh, I'm going to probably upgrade my sword for this, because that one's nearly dead. I don't want it to die in the middle of a battle with two zombies. <laughs> And a rather short-lived battle it was, too. Let's quickly place some torches. I don't think it was particularly spawning many mobs anyway, because it was lit by daylight. But that was very, very interesting. A zombie dungeon right up there on a mountainside. So, let's see what we've won. Cocoa beans and some wheat. Very nice. And a bit more bread and some gunpowder. And some iron, string, redstone, and a bucket. Well, now I've got a full inventory, which is mildly annoying. But, you know, too good to leave behind, really. Um, I could always leave them here, I suppose, because I'm not that far from home, actually. But, no, let's move on. So that's really nice, a dungeon to start this journey off. Now we need to uh, continue on our mission and see if we can find a cave system, perhaps, around dusk. Sun is more than halfway across the sky now we're continuing east and uh, hoping to move underground and find an abandoned mine shaft i'll speak to you soon okay i've been going quite a while now the sun is setting uh, i've crossed a tiger biome and uh, a desert biome and some grasslands in between but now it's starting to get dark and I'm starting to wish I wasn't out in the open, so I'm looking for a nice little cave entrance, or perhaps just start digging down before I start getting mobbed by the mobs. Uh, there's what looks like a bit of darkness here. Is this a cave? No, and there's zombies, so it's time to start digging, I think, and we'll just find a way underground, and I'm sure at some stage we're going to uh, break through into a cave. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, broken through just a tiny bit too low for this water by the looks of things. There's an enderman around. Lovely. This looks promising. Let's have a look and see what there is. It's the bottom of a ravine. There's an enderman there minding his own business. Looks like we might be at the lava layer here. So, this is as good a place as any to start looking around, find um, an abandoned mine shaft. I don't think he likes that water. Yeah, I don't like it either because it's going to push me into lava if I'm not careful, so I might just close it off, if at all possible.
Yeet, come on. There we go. Good. Let's see what we can find down here. And the lava means it's not too dangerous because all the mobs are not spawning because it's too light for them. But there's a lot of water, which is mildly annoying. Pleasantly quiet down here, anyway. But nothing much to it. Could be a bit of a pitiful ravine, after all. Which is annoying. That fog looks weird in the distance, though. I wonder if that's an optifying thing. Okay, I will bring you back in. Oh, <laughs> hello, creepy Enderman there. Uh, I'll bring you back in if anything fun happens. Such as me grabbing my looting sword and trying to get an ender pearl out of this chap here. <laughs> Help if I hit him with a sword rather than a <laughs> torch. But never mind. We didn't get anything out of him anyway. Yeah, this fog looks weird, doesn't it? Nothing interesting about this ravine, but uh, it was fun to explore. I'm going to head back up top, I think, because I reckon that actually ravines might be the way to go. If I can keep walking till I can see into a ravine, then that might give me a quicker way down. So, we shall carry on exploring. Hello, zombie. Yes, it is rather warm out here. I have found a little cave system, actually. This looks quite promising, a nice way down, so uh, let's give it a go. So that's my way out. Put a torch on it. Diamonds! Yes, we love it when we find diamonds in here. Is it going to be a large selection, or just the one? Let's have a look. One, two, three, four, probably five. Oh, this looks very promising. I haven't got a pickaxe of the fortune enchantment with me. I do have one in my base for when I'm strip mining, but I'm not going to pass up these diamonds because I may never get back here again. So, we shall just say, never mind. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Six diamonds. Hooray! Good. Well, this is turning into quite a successful trip so far. Let's press on and see what we can find. Uh, see if we can get a mine shaft. It doesn't seem like there is one here. I think if you find a mine shaft, the chances are it's so extensive that you would hit it straight away when you start going underground. But you never know. This cave system might lead to interesting things anyway, like skeletons. Light up, and let's go and deal with you, sir. Oh, he shot me under there. Okay. Interesting. We seem to have come out in a ravine, another very quiet ravine with lava in the bottom and no mobs that might be uh, that might be as good a place as any to carry on exploring because it covers as much ground as possible in as short a time as possible so let's let's just make ourselves a bit of a stairway down here let's put this lava out before i do myself an injury but yeah this is a nice ravine Not seeing any mine shafts at the moment. Hmm. 
Nope, another dead end. Definitely footsteps and no other noises, which usually means creepers or testificates, but that seems unlikely. Whoa, creeper! Hello! <laughs> okay, I thought I was dropping down into somewhere I'd been before, but I clearly hadn't. And that was probably the footsteps I could hear. Daylight. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful morning or afternoon or yeah, mid afternoon. And we have not yet found an abandoned mine shaft, so we must continue our quest. I think that's the tallest cactus I've ever seen in Minecraft. Five blocks tall, we shall call it the Cactus of Destiny. And our destiny is to find an abandoned mine shaft, and that cactus just told me so. I see it, look, wood in the distance by that zombie there. Abandoned mineshaft, brilliant, I'm so pleased. So pleased to find that. So, the quest for the melon continues. <coughs> <coughs> 